guys, welcome back. I finally got it, and this is the guitar I know a lot of folks on the channel and on YouTube, quite frankly, have been interested in hearing about. And that is the RJ Basics, and this is the Broadcaster model, interestingly. Uh, yeah, they, they've got two models right now on Amazon. The Broadcaster, right, which is no, no, no mystery. It's a, it's a telly style guitar, right, as you can see. And then they have what's called the Skycaster, which is their Strat style guitar. And I was very curious about these guitars because Phil McKnight had done a video on the Skycaster uh, half a year ago and gave it a fairly decent review. Nothing rave, but said for $99.99 it was a, a really good deal, right? So I said, okay, let me, let me take a look because there's a lot of folks now in that space for budget guitars. And they describe themselves, this particular company, as having professional specs at beginner budget, right? So I'm saying, okay, based on what they describe the guitar as having, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, right? At, at $99.99, which is a great price here in the U.S. So, what are the specs that they advertise that are above and beyond the other guys at 100 bucks or below, right? And that's stainless steel frets. They advertise these things as having stainless steel frets. Now, quite frankly, the frets on here very well might be stainless steel, but they are far from good, okay? I'll be completely transparent with you. Again, guys, just for those of you that aren't familiar with the channel, these guitars aren't given to me, right? So I have no vested interest in BSing you and telling you something that I honestly feel is not the truth. Um, I bought this with my own money on Amazon, and I'm going to give you my own honest review. So right out of the chute, it's got several high frets on this guitar that need attention. And again, you know me by now, if you've been watching the channel, I'm not a luthier. I don't attempt to be even an amateur luthier. So I'm not going to shave down or lower these frets or bang them in or do anything because I'll wind up screwing the guitar more than it is right now. But let me just show you what I'm talking about, right? So I'm going to turn the sound down just so you can see. Um, Okay, so action is relatively good out of the box. It's fairly low. Um, intonation is off, obviously. But here, right? So this is the high E string, right? 12th fret, completely fretting out, right? Can't play a note at the 11th, at the 12th fret. Similarly, on the B string, same thing, 12th fret. Now, 13th fret, you can play 11th fret. It's just the 12th fret, which means that most likely the 13th fret is high. And I have similar things as I go down the fretboard on the guitar. I've, it appears that there's at least two high frets, maybe three, on this guitar. Um, so that's one thing. They're supposed to be ball-end frets. They're not, okay? These are not ball-end frets. These are regular frets. Um, I got lucky. But they're not sharp, but um, Phil McKnight claimed on his guitar he had uh, he shredded two stock stockings with it. So these frets are okay. They're not fantastic, but they're they're not sharp. Full disclosure. Um, so the stainless steel frets are one thing, but when you have high frets, it doesn't matter what they are. It's it's a problem, especially for a beginner. That means you got to take this thing, get it set up, and by the time you're paying setup costs. You're spending more on that than you are on the price of this guitar. It's no longer a bargain for somebody that's looking for this as a gift for a student, a child. You're, you're first learning on something. Um, you don't want that. So out of the box, this is unplayable right now. There's all sorts of buzzing and crap going on down here. Um, nine and a half inch radius, right? Polonia body. Doesn't have a belly car for those of you that are interested. It is a string through. And uh, what, another funny thing is that it's got RJ supposedly embossed on here, on the, on the neck plate, but depending upon the lighting, you can barely see it. It's barely embossed, embossed on the neck plate, which is interesting. Um, uh, satin finish, almost like a raw finish on the wood, on the maple wood on the back of the neck. Doesn't state on anywhere on the headstock where this guitar is made. So I have no idea if it's made in the Philippines, which they claim it is, or China. On the box, it says China, but I'm not sure if that means that the box is made there or whatever, but it doesn't state anywhere on this guitar a serial number or where it's made. These pickups, uh, pickups, these tuners, uh, seal tuners, they're very inexpensive. They're budget 
tuners that are on most budget guitars, nothing special. Um, what else? Let me think uh, on the back of the guitar. Um, the neck joint is okay. It seems to fit okay. As you can see, there's not a lot of gap there. Um, nut is supposed to be a bone nut. That's another selling point of this guitar. Phil McKnight took it out and bit it. Claims it's a bone nut. This, to me, it's hard to really tell. Um, I'll tell you one thing. The cut of the nut is not good. You, I don't know how well you could see this in, in um, this camera angle here, but the low E... A and um, D strings, specifically the low E and A string, are sitting much higher at the nut than the others. So they're not seated in uh, deep enough. The nut's not cut cut uh, deep enough on 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 the uh, on the nut. That might have an effect. It might not. I don't know. But this nut might be a bone nut. But if it is, it's a very very inexpensive. It, it appears to me like a plastic nut, but it could be bone. You know, that, that, that manufacturer claims it is. McKnight claimed it was, so I'm not going to argue. Uh, supposed to have graphite shielding in here. I haven't taken it apart. Wouldn't know that. I don't even know, quite honestly. Some people say it makes a difference. Other people say it doesn't. Um, what else? Ceramic single coil pickups. Six saddle bridge. Three ply pickguard. Uh, what else? It's a C-shaped neck. It's a, it's, a, it's a shallow C, I would say. It's a fairly thin neck. Uh, 22 frets on this guitar, and they appear to be medium frets, maybe medium jumbo. I don't know. Uh, the 9.5 inch radius I mentioned. Um, yeah, so those are the specs on the guitar. Now, the selling advantages of why this is supposed to be so much better, again, are the stainless steel frets and the bone nut. Does that make a difference? Uh, it might to some. But to me, on this guitar, no. Because, simply because, I'll tell you the main issues I have with this guitar. Was the fact that it's got high frets on it, which is not good out of the box. And then it needs attention now. I would need to bring it to a luthier to have them uh, attended to. Uh, the pickups on here are barely acceptable. Let me put it that way. They're not very good. The attenuators on that are, you know, on the knobs, on the tone knobs barely work you you go from 10 to 1 basically there's no in-betweens on the, on the volume or the tone on these knobs um what else do i have to talk about really uh the guitar's weight a lot of people say it's heavy and and phil was complaining about neck dive i don't notice that on this guitar i don't really notice this guitar being super heavy either i would say this is a typical telecaster weight which is maybe seven and a half pounds eight pounds maybe maybe less I uh, haven't waited. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Um, RJ. <laughs> if you're wondering uh, what RJ even means, right? Uh, the owner of the company is Ramon Jacinto out of the Philippines. It's his business. That's what RJ Guitars is. And they have a couple of different lines, right? Um, this is the entry, entry point of their lines. And then they go up to the gig line and some other guitars. Um, I'm not even going to bore you with those details because I'm, I'm not getting that far. The headstock is kind of an odd shape, right? It's waved out, I guess. Um, you have RJ at the headstock, tip of the headstock and broadcaster, and it's um, raised. So it, it's like plastic or some, some material raised that is on top of the, on top of the wood. Um, it's attractive looking. I'll give them that much, the guitar. But... Quality-wise, it's worth maybe $100, I would say, probably less. So they're probably charging you a budget price and giving you something that might be <laughs> reasonable at that price, but I would pay much less for it, to be honest with you. When you used, when I was able to get uh, the Indio Tellys from Monoprice for $79, bucks, 75 bucks in some cases, the Monoprice Indios are significantly better quality than these. Their stock pickups are better than these, this guitar. The playing experience and setup out of the box is better than this guitar, right? Uh, Donner, Donner Telecasters, quality-wise, pickups, finishing out of the box, playing at experience out of the box, much better than this guitar. Uh, Squire 
Bullets or Sonics, the low end of Squires, significantly better. Now, that Squire debut, which supposedly comes in a T-style guitar, a Tele-style guitar at $119.99, will be significantly better than this guitar at $100. So, do I think this is a good buy? Would I suggest or recommend it to you? Absolutely not. Um, if you're somebody that wants to tinker and uh, right out of the chute lower frets and, and, and polish them and and replace pickups and tuners and things of that nature, go for it. But when you're at that point, you can get a Fogeal <laughs> or some of the other no-brand guitars on Amazon significantly less than this for 80 bucks. Uh, look at the look at the uh, Gear IT guitar that they had as low as 50 bucks uh, on sale. This thing does not punch above its weight. I'll be honest with you. This you're not getting. A $500 quality guitar for 100 bucks, and thinking, man, I, did I get a steal buying this RJ Broadcaster? You're getting a $100 guitar. And in some cases, you may be lucky, and it might be worth 100 bucks to you. In this case, not so much with the work that has to be put into it. So here, let me, let me uh, tell you what the guitar comes with as well, just so you know. Put this down for a second. So it ships with this really, really cheap cable. All right, this is a throwaway cable for the guitar. A very, very cheap guitar strap. Comes with the Allen wrench and the adjustable um, a tool for the intonation. And here, guys, this is the gig bag this thing ships with, okay? This is like tissue paper, okay? It's a, some kind of a cloth material with RJ on it. But look at how thin this thing is. It has no padding inside. None. It is basically a dust cover. The zipper on here is questionable. It's going to break off. I'm with guarantee. I'm not going to even play with it in short order. This thing is going to tear. So this is going to be either have to be replaced or maybe used for a short period of time before it's totally destroyed. It, it is the cheapest gig bag of gig bags, right? That comes with the guitar. Um, okay. So let's let you hear what this thing sounds like um, with clean a clean setting. So here is the um, neck pickup, this lipstick style pickup. And now the neck and the bridge, middle position. And now just the inset pick up in the bridge. Very, very ice picky, very, very almost unbearable to listen to, to be honest with you. We'll play some single notes with just the neck pickup. Both pickups. And just the bridge pickup. I'm going to put some distortion on the guitar. Both pickups. And just the bridge pickup. See, there's the drum.
drop off, right? It's there's nothing going on in between. Um, yeah. So guys, let me get this out of here. That's the RJ broadcaster. I'm a little disappointed. I have to admit, I was looking forward to being blown away. Actually, thinking that wow, this is a this is a great deal. It's not. I mean, T's guitars, granted, they're a little bit more money, the Tele style guitars, than this, but it, it's like night and day in terms of quality, pickups, uh, playability, the whole bit. Support, more than likely, right? I don't know if there's any support at all, quite frankly. I haven't tested it, but if there's any support at all with this guitar. But, um, and, it's, and it ships in a single box, this box, inside the gig bag. Um, I, I, you know, I saved you the pain of a, an unboxing, but that's how it shipped. There's no outer box, no double box, single boxed inside the gig bag, which is very, very light to begin with and non-protective. So I was lucky that the guitar didn't have any, any damage on it. But yeah, guys, that's my experience with RJ Guitars. If you have any questions, um, do me a favor and put them in the comments below. Uh, if you like these videos, guys, please subscribe. And as always, uh, until the next time, be well and stay safe. Take care.